The evangel is God's power for salvation and cannot fail. The law failed, for it was weak through the flesh. Abraham was justified, made right with God by faith, not by works. We, we, may, we are made right with God by Christ's faith in us, not by our works. We receive God's grace even when we sin, because God is conciliated. The evangel is God's power for salvation and does not depend on the sinner. It is not just the new believer who discovers that flesh is powerful. Like Paul, we know how easy it is to sin against our will. But this exposes a vital lesson we, we all must learn. In me is no good thing. There is only one who is good, and that is God. Matthew chapter 19, verse 17. There is one word which Paul often uses with the word grace, and that is peace. Notice when I say grace and peace at the end of the show. That's what I do. Peace follows automatically when we receive grace from God. Exactly. Isaiah told, uh, uh, told Israel, there is no peace for the wicked. There is no peace for they live in fear of death and judgment. <coughs> so living in fear of death and judgment. The majority of the world fear death. Of course, they fear death. We all do not. We know what death is. It's an enemy. But we do not fear it. As members of the body of Christ and somebody who is a believer, they do not actually fear death. They know that it's sleep. They know there's no consciousness in death. This is why we do not fear it. If it comes, it comes. But the rest of the world fear death. They have no expectation. Put it that way. Human reasoning and human efforts bring no peace. Many assume that only alternative, alternative, alternative to law is license. <laughs> the Apostle Paul was well aware of this argument. He wrote to the believers in Rome, chap chapter 6, verse 1 in Romans, When they shall, what, sh what then shall we declare? That we may persist in sin that grace should be increasing. Absolutely not. May it not be coming to that. Paul used, uses that phrase a lot. May it not be coming to that. But to ask the question is to reveal the foolishness of it. If we have been justified, why would, why would we want to go back to the cesspit of sin if we're justified? We wouldn't. We are, we are sinners no matter what in our flesh, in our humanity. We are sinners no matter what. We missed the mark. But we do not want to go back there because we are justified. We do not want to swim in the pool of missing the mark. Paul answers his own question in the next verse. May it not be coming to that. We who died to sin, how should, how should we still be living it in it? Instead of trying to find a loophole in the law to allow us to sin, we should follow Paul's admonition in Colossians 3, 1 through 3. If then you are roused together with Christ, be seeking that which is above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Be disposed to that which is above, not to that on the earth. For you died, and your life is hid together with Christ in God. In the cha same chapter, he says that because God has been so gracious to us, we are to be gracious to others. Romans chapter 7 verse 4 reveals our responsibility under grace. So that, may, so that my brethren, you also were put to death to the law through the body of Christ for you to become another's who is roused from among the dead that we should be bearing fruit to God. Galatians 6, 7 comes with a warning. Be not deceived. God is not to be sneered at. For whatsoever a man may be sowing, this shall be he be reaping also. For he who is sowing for the, his own flesh, from flesh shall he be reaping corruption. The next verse should encourage us to do, do what is right. Yet he who is sowing for the Spirit 
shall be reaping life Eonian. So you know what continuing, continuing to miss the mark is. It brings you to that place where you're reaping corruption, literally. You're missing the mark. Even more encouraging are Paul's words in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, which should be etched in our, in our mind. Nothing consequently is now condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Don't walk according to the flesh, but according to spirit. Christ's spirit's, spirit is in us. <coughs> These are God's words to us today. If we did have a license to sin, we would not have peace with God. We would not be gracious to others. And we would not be bearing fruit for Christ. James Bond's license to kill is fiction. And the believer's license to sin is also fiction. I shall end as Paul ended his letter to Galatians. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brethren. Amen.